Thank you everyone for joining. We're having a live class here. Uh, the topic will be on Lagba Omer and the Rebbe will explain some of the deeper meanings and if anyone has any questions on the topic of Lagba Omer, please comment them in the comment section on the video. Okay. The idea of Lagba Omer, the entire idea of Lagba Omer, is the Lagba Omer is the chayas, the life force, the energy, the oil within the month of Iyar. And generally, Iyar, the time of Sphira, corresponds to a time of mourning, which we'll understand a little further why. A time of katnas, of constriction, of smallness. And chay Iyar, which is the day of chayas of Iyar, the life of Iyar, is the day where we receive the light to be revealed within the darkness within the constriction, within the smallness, within the exile, we receive the light. And, and, and Lagba Oyer represents the time of the Oyer. And the, particularly the Oyer, Aragon is the hidden light that was revealed later through Rabbi Shem Bayochai. That's why also Lagba Oyer is the same, the same day that the Man started falling in the desert because it gave nourishment to the people in the desert. And that's symbolic of the idea of Lagba Oyer. It's a time when we receive light in the place of the desert, in the place where there's no food, in a place where, where, where people are, are famished and people don't have to eat and don't have nourishment, the idea of the lag is the oil to reveal the light within the darkness. This is also connected to the to Samanafshi Lakim Lekel Choy, that my Samanafshi, my, my nefesh, my soul yearns Lekel Choy to the living God. When will I come to see the face of Elikim? It's a verse in, in Psalms and Samach Yimel, 63. Elikim, my, my soul yearns for Elikim, the Kelchoi for the living God. Kelchoi, in numeric value, is 49. So the whole idea of the sphere is the longing to have an experience of Kelchoi. A kelcha is a living God, something that's alive, that has, that has life force, that has animation, has vitality, has freshness. And Masa Yavavira, Pnei Lakim, the Pnei Lakim, when will I come to see the face of Alakim? Alakim represents the idea of judgment and constriction and limitation, concealment. Alakim is the Kli Hashem. Elokim is numeric value is 86, which is the same numeric value as the word the Kli, the vessel of Hashem's light, of Yudke Vavke. So that, Pnei Elokim, is the inner essence of Elokim. The inner essence of Elokim, which is the middle letters, Elokim is spelled with five letters, Aleph, Lamed, Hey, Yud, Mem. And the middle letters, which is Lamed, Hey, Yud, has, if you do the Pnei Elokim, which is the letter before that, which is which is instead of a Lamed, you have a Chaf, Instead of a yud, you have a test. Instead of a hey, you have a dalid. So you have the numeric value of the word thirty-three, which we'll understand a little bit, understand a little bit this more. But the the basic understanding of Lagba Oimer is that Lagba Oimer is a time when it was it's revealed in the world a new or a new light, which is a light that allows us to exist in exile, to be in the place of exile, and still be connected to the light. This is the the lekel choy, the, the living God which is also connected, we're just throwing up a lot of ideas, no one understand them a little bit more. This is also connected that we say that that the students of Rabbi Akiva did not have respect for each other. What does it mean they didn't have respect for each other? It doesn't mean they didn't love each other because Rabbi Akiva is the famous, uh, Rabbi Akiva is a famous person that said the statement of that love your fellow neighbor is the great principle of the Torah. So of course the students of Rabbi Akiva, they're called the students of Rabbi Akiva, of course they loved each other, they didn't have respect. What does it mean to have respect? Respect means to respect the person for who they are right now. A parent can love a child. And sometimes a parent loves a child, you love the child the same way you love the child when the child is is a two-year-old is the same way you love the child when the child is 20 years old. But that's not respecting the child. Respecting the child is recognizing that your child is actually not 20. That's the idea of covet. Covet comes from the kvedas, the idea of to recognize that the, the, the person that you're having a relationship with is, is a living being and is constantly changing. And it's a lekel choy, just like with Hashem, you have a living relationship with the God of life. 
Same thing also in relationship with people, you recognize the, the, the awareness that the person is, is, is constantly changing. When you relate to somebody from a perspective of, I know this person already. You know, some people, you, you meet someone after 20 years and you say, oh, I remember this person the way they were when they were 20 years old, so it's probably the same, the same type of person. When you relate to people from a perspective of kvar, which is when it's old, then it's not, it's not a living relationship. The relationship is without cover, without, without honor. This is why we say that exile, golos, starts on nar kvar. What is the golos that starts on nar kvar? That when Yecheskel says that he was on across the river of kvar, what does kvar mean? Kvar means that it was already. That's exile. Exile means to be in a condition that you say it's old, it's already, I know this already, I know who you are already, I, there's nothing new, there's nothing, there's no ischach, there's no renewal. And this is the idea of, of, of Lag Ba'oymer, which is to bring chayas, life, vitality, freshness, newness into our experiences of life and to bring life and or into every single aspect of our life, even into the place of the choyshech, even the place of the darkness. This is Bekitzer, this is in general what the idea of Lag Ba'oymer is. And now we'll try to understand a little of the details. What is Lag Ba'oymer historically and how it developed into a minor form of Yom Tev and how we celebrate it today. So let's start off what is Lag Ba'oymer, simply how we, how we understand it. So there's a very, there's a famous Gemara, the Gemara Yivam, so it says like this, that there was Talmud Rabbi Kiva, there was, was 24,000 students of Rabbi Kiva, and um, these 24,000 students of Rabbi Kiva passed away from Pesach to Atzeres, from Pesach until Shavuos. And this is what the Gemara says. The Gemara just says, our sages just tell us that they passed away. Why did they pass away? Because they didn't have respect for each other. It just says that they passed away. It doesn't say in the Gemara that we mourn their passing or that we commemorate their passing. It just tells us the fact that this is 24,000 students. 24,000 students of Rikiva passed away. Later, it says in the Rishonim, it says already in the Goinim, or through Goin and others, that uh, because of that, the time period of Sphira between Pesach and Shavuos is a time of mourning. We're mourning for the death of Talmud Yerbiya, the students of Rabbi Akiva. So why do we celebrate Lag Ba'imer? What's Lag Ba'imer? So this is already also, again, a tradition already that we have in the Zman of Rishayim, from the times of Rishayim, Al Pray Sachag, that the Rishayim write, the Meiri writes this, and the Tajbir writes this, and the, and the Mesi Yosef quotes this in Shulchan Aruch, that they only passed away two-thirds of the time, which means that they died from Pesach until Lag Ba'imer, until the 33rd day of Ayimer, or the 34th day of Ayimer, and on Lag Ba'imer, Paschal Lomos, they stopped dying. So why do we celebrate Lag Ba'imer? Because Lag Ba'imer was a time that all the students of Rabbi Kiva ceased to die. The only problem is when they ceased to die because there was no one left to, no one left to live, they all, they all passed away. But they stopped dying. Paschalomus. So that's why it says in Shulchan Aruch that it's, we do a little we do, we do a little bit joy. Mix a simcha on this day because it commemorates the day that they they stop they stop passing they stop dying. This is this is the this is the opinion of the Shulchan Aruch, and uh, and the, the, this is the opinion of the Beis Yosef. The idea of avel avelus the word avel which means to mourn. Ramosh David Valley Number writes has the numeric value of thirty three. And uh, Kavod has the uh, Maral writes has 32, so which means that they all passed away in those 32, 33 days, and that's when Paschal almost. That's the first opinion that the reason why we celebrate Lag Boimer is because they stopped dying. So we have to understand this a little bit more Boimek, a little bit more in depth. Okay, so they stopped dying, and the real reason they stopped dying because there was no one left. They only had it says that after after they all passed away, Rabbi Kiva went. And he gathered another five students. One of them is Rabbi Shimon, the Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Shemua. He gathered these five students, and he started a new yeshiva. He started a new, a new gathering of students. But the rest of the students passed away. So Paschalomus. This is what uh, this is the first opinion. And this is the this is the first time we find in Shulchan Aruch, we find the idea of 
that uh, we sell, we commemorate this day of Lag Boimer. In Simon Tzav Tadagdalad. The second opinion is the opinion of the Ramah. The Ramah is Yisrael. The Ramah writes, in the Agas, the Ramah writes, on the Shulchan Aruch, that, no, it's not that they died from Pesach until Pesach Hag, until two-thirds of the days of Sphira, which is till, Lago, till the 33rd, 34th day of the Omer, but rather, they, they really passed away from Rish Chodesh till three days before Shavuos. That's the 33 days. So what happened like Lag Something miraculous. On Lag Bo'emer, the 33rd day of the Omer, they didn't die. They died the day before Lag Bo'emer, and they died the day after Lag Bo'emer. But on the day of Lag Bo'emer itself, they didn't die. This is the opinion of the Ramah. So we can understand now, according to the Ramah, that Lag Bo'emer has some special quality. It's not only Paschal Omer that they cease dying, but there's something about the specialty of the quality of the day is they passed away the day before and they passed away the day after. But on Lag Bo'emer itself, they didn't pass away. So what is the special quality of Lag Bo'emer that because of that they didn't pass away? And interestingly, the Ramah himself passed away on Lag Bo'emer. The Yard says the Ramah is on Lag Bo'emer. This is the second opinion. Another opinion is the opinion of the Maril. The, Mar- the Maril has another opinion. The Maril writes, there are, there, there are, Maril writes that um, when it says that they died only for 33 of the days, it doesn't mean that they died from Pesach until Lag Bayer or from Rosh Chodesh until three days before Yom Tov, Shavuos. But the Maril, Yaakov Molin, was a very important Ashkenazic scholar. He was the first person to write Minig Ashkenaz, the customs of Ashkenaz in the 14th century. Um, the Maril writes that um, they passed away only on Yimei Choyl, only on weekdays. They only passed away on weekdays. And they didn't pass away on Shabbos. They didn't pass away on the days of Yom Tov, And they didn't pass away on Rosh Chodesh. So if you eliminate those days, those are 17 days in total. So you only have that they died in 33 days. So really, according to the Maril, on Lag Bo'emer itself, they actually passed away. It's just symbolically, because 33 days passed from, from the beginning of Pesach, of the times of the Sphere, we symbolically commemorate this day as the day of Pascha Lomas that they, passed, they stopped dying. Another opinion is we find in the Marsha. The Marsha has an, an interesting opinion, not in the here in Yuvamas, elsewhere. The, the Marsha writes that the reason why we celebrate Lag Bo'emer is because like Bo'emer is, there was a supermajority, which means that the days of Sphere is 49 days. You divide the 49 days into three, which is 16 and a little bit, 16 and a third. And so when 32 days a little, and a little bit passed, you actually have the supermajority from the days of Sphere, right? So you have two thirds. Two thirds of the days of Sphere already passed. And he says, that's the reason why we celebrate. We'll have to understand this opinion a little bit further, because it seems that when two thirds of the day of sphere are already passed, it seems like that day, which will be Lag Bo'emer, is the peak of sphere. That's like the height of sphere. So why in the height of sphere do we celebrate? This is this is four understandings of why we celebrate Lag Bo'emer, because they ceased to die, they did not die that day. It's symbolic of that day, or because two thirds of the Omer passed. Then there's the more famous reason or the more known reason that people have heard about, that the reason why we celebrate Lag Bo'emer has to do with, it's the day of the Hilula of Rashbi, the day of Rashbi's passing. Rabbi Shem Ba'yachai is one of the five students, like we said before, one of the five students that remained after Rabbi Kiva. After all the students, 24,000 students from Rabbi Kiva passed away, one of the students that remained, that Rabbi Kiva taught Torah, was to Rabbi Shem Ba'yachai. And Rabbi Shem Ba'yachai passed, away on this day. Like it says in Kisveri, it says in the teachings of the Arizal, that um, it's Yom Shemes Rashbi, the day that Rashbi passed away. The Chida says maybe it's Yom Simchas Rashbi, but the, the understanding of all the Tzadikim since, since the times of, uh, of the, the Balatanya forward, and the Yonis Aipshitz and all the great Tzadikim wrote that it's Yom Shemes Rashbi, that there was a tradition that actually the day that Rashbi passed away. So this is another. This is very strange. On one hand, you're saying that the whole idea of Lag Bo'emer is because Paschal Lomus, because they stopped dying. 
the students of Rabbi Kiva stop dying. So therefore, we celebrate the day of Lag Baimer because it's the day that they pass, they, they stop dying. On the other hand, you say that the whole reason why we celebrate Lag Baimer is because the day Rosh Hashanah passed away. So is a person's passing away a positive thing or a negative thing? Huh? And he's a student of Rabbi Kiva, exactly. So if you want to say, some people would say that maybe because Rosh B lived a full life, they died in a younger life. But it seems strange that the Hilula, the day of Rosh B, the day that he passed, that should be the day of. It's almost we have to contrast those two those two deaths. It's true also that in the Idra Zutra, in the in the very mystical part of the Zohar, and it's later brought down the Mishkh Siddim, it says that the the the, the, the Rosh B or Shimon asked. The, Shimon asks that the, that the day that he passes on should be a day of celebration. But that in itself is a, is a, is a, is a pella. It's a, it's a strange thing. Usually we know that according to the Jewish law, according to Allah, usually when a person passes away, it's a day of mourning. It's a day of fasting. Some people fast for, uh, for Zion other because, because uh, Moshe Rabbeinu passed away. So it's a shukhla. Some people fast. So fasting or a yard set of a parent, some people fast. And this is the Shailah that the Chassam Soifer asked and the Shailah Meshav asked. It's a simple question. How could you celebrate a time of a person's passing? A person that passes away, usually it's introspective. You're not making bonfires and dancing around the fire. It's, it's, uh, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't make so much sense. So even though he asked for it, then there's also interesting traditions, higher, higher messiahs, that says, for example, that... Um, the Bnei Yisachar says that it was the day of the birth of Rabbi Akiva, a uh, birth of Rabbi Shem Mechai. The Lag Boimer is also his birthday. That's what Bnei Yisachar says. It's uh, after Makabel. It. It's not. Uh, he had it. He had it in Ruch Hakodesh. The Aruch Hashulchan writes that it's the day that uh, he left the cave. The Lag Boimer. Which incidentally, the, in the Gemara, where it says that he talks about he left his cave, is is, is page Lachman Gimel, page thirty three in Shabbos. But it's also Messiah. We have to understand, really, the simple reason has to do with Yom Shemesa Rashbi. It's a day of Simchas Rashbi, a day of the joy of Rashbi. And also, there's something about the day that is contrast to the other students of Rabbi Kiva, where we celebrate, where we mourn for their, their passing, and Rabbi Shemesa we actually do the opposite. So, why do we really mourn for the Talmudia Rabbi Kiva? Tamidi or Akiva, they passed away. Why do we mourn? What's the, the, the mourning? And it's also interesting because, unfortunately and sadly, it's not, it seems, it's not the most tragic event in Jewish history. We just lived through Churban uh, and uh, those tremendous pogroms and persecutions throughout the years. And we don't find that for, you know, for. Th- 33 or 49 days, however you practice, people don't get married and they'll play music and they cut their hair. Why Dafka, the students of Rikiva, deserve such a, such a memory and such a national place of mourning? So on one level, and this is the, 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 the phrase, the way the, the sage also phrase it, is that when Rikiva was... Kula liberty of Rikiva. Everything followed Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva was the person of Torah Shabbat. Just like Moshe gave Torah Shabbat Ksav, Rabbi Kiva was the nitzvah of Moshe, was the embodiment of the whole, of the whole oral tradition of Torah Shabbat. So we have to understand that the death of the students of Rabbi Kiva was not just a death of another teacher that had other students. The death was, in the language of the word, the world was shimum, the world was, was empty, which means there was chas v'shalom, a fear that uh, that the, the Messiah of 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 will be lost, or a lot of it's forgotten. So there was not just that Tamidi Rakiva passed away. Tamidi Rakiva it represents a, a certain Messiah of of the, the the receiving of the Torah that was lost, that was potentially lost. So that's why like Ba'imer, which Paschalamus, the Chidar writes, that's the day that Rabbi Kiva opened up his new yeshiva. That's the day that he gathered the five students. The Kafa Chaim says that's the day he gave them smicha, which means the day where we celebrate Lag Boimer in contrast is we're trying to, we're saying like this, there was a time that Torah Shabbat had the oral tradition, the living oral tradition that was the embodiment of Rabbi Kiva was in peril. 
there's a uh, uh, possibility of a lot of Torah Shabbat to be lost. And what did Rabbi Kiva do? What did Rabbi Kiva do is something unique and amazing. We can un- we cannot understand what that means to have twenty four thousand students and a God forbid they all should pass away in a very short period of time. But let me give you a, a, an example. I don't know if it's such a good example, but let's say imagine. I don't know where you're living, but let's say you're living in a place that for a down payment of the house, for a down payment of the house, you have to pay twenty four thousand dollars. Hello, bye. You have to pay twenty-four thousand dollars, and you collected it over years of time. And Kiva collected students over years of time; it didn't happen one day. And he collected and collected and collected. And he had twenty-four thousand. This is the the Kula This is the Rikiva. This is the tradition of the living embodiment of Torah. And then, in a very short period of time, you have twenty-four thousand dollars, and you invest it. And uh, Shomem, everything is lost. Lost for twenty years. You're waiting to have the money to be put away to buy your house. And then, in a very short period of time, in 33 days, in one month, everything disappears. What would you do? What would be the natural reaction of a person? Probably depression, sadness, mourning. You'd be like in a really bad state, especially, let's say, you prepare $24,000. For 20 years, you were, you, were, <laughs> you were getting the money. And then, a friend of yours comes and says, he sees that you're in a bad place and says... I see that you lost $24,000. This is terrible. Your whole dream is shattered. Here's $5. Here, I want, to, I want to be very nice to you. I want to be kind to you. Take $5. What are you going to do with $5? You need $24,000. You don't need $5. If someone would give you $5, you'd feel like it's, 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 it's almost a slap in the face. Now let's try to think about Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva loses 24,000 students, and the day after he loses, the, la- the, the day when they finally die, what does he do? He goes and he finds another, another five students. So we have to imagine the godless, the greatness of Rebbe Kiva is that he looked at the possibility and said, there's always possibility for, for, for a new tomorrow. He was able to say that it's not, it's not an end. Taka, I, I, I really lost 24,000 students. And Rebbe Kiva also lived through a very painful time in history, which if you know a little bit the history of the times of Rebbe Kiva, Rebbe Kiva lived through the time of the Bar Kochel revolt. When there's the character of Ben Kaziva, that was about 60, 70 years after the destruction of the second base, I mean the second temple, which is a 70 common era, so this is like 130 common era. And there was a character, Shimben Kaziva, who was later called Bar Koichla, the son of the, the son of the star, because Rabbi Kiva said, Yaakov, that he will be the new he will be Mashiach. And they actually thought at that time period that they will overthrow the Romans and rebuild the base of English. And Rabbi Kiva carried the banner of Bar Koichva and said that he's Malach HaMashiach, he's the King Mashiach. And that dream was shattered because Bar Koichva killed Rabbi Elezer and Beitar is a whole sad story. And, and Rabbi Kiva reverted his, uh, his, uh, his support of, of Bar Koichva. So Rabbi Kiva lived through a very, very traumatic time, both nationally and spiritually. And yet Rabbi Kiva didn't give up. So this is on one level, Lag Boimer is a celebration of Rabbi Kiva. Pascal Lomos, that the students of Rabbi Kiva passed away, but it's the day that Rabbi Kiva started again, that he gathered the students, and he started teaching them, he gave them smicha, and he started his yeshiva. That's, that's the greatness of Rabbi Kiva. That's why a lot of the songs that we sing on Lag Boimer has to do with Rabbi Kiva. On Rabbi Kiva, people sing the, the song, people sing the praise of Rabbi Kiva. But let's understand this a little bit, also a little bit different. We say... We're going to try to contrast as much as we can between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Shem Bayachai. So these are the two big tzaddikim. One is the Rebbe, one is the Talmud. But they represent two different, two different types of qualities of the people. Rabbi Kiva was a person, this if you read a little bit of Chazal, what, what they speak about Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva was a very uh, embodied person, very much connected to, to this world. He was very rich, and he, he he married a very rich woman, and then he became very rich on his own, then he married a princess. Rekiva was a very embodied tzaddik, very much, his, it says that Rekiva, that his, that his hand 
was the hand of Aniyam, hand of, of charity. He, Rabbi Kiva was very much a tzaddik that lives in this world, a tzaddik that cares about, uh, about this world. This is the Madrega, this is the level of Rabbi Kiva. In contrast that to Rabbi Shem Ba'echai, which was one of his students, so Rabbi Shem Ba'echai, it almost says the opposite. Rabbi Shem Ba'echai lived 12, 13 years alone in a cave. It says, A lot of people try to be like Rabbi Shimon, which means Torah and Manasseh, just sitting and learning, not involved in commerce, not involved in this world. So Rabbi Shimon in the Zohar is called Nuni Yama. Rabbi Shimon is called like the fish in the sea. It's a tzaddik that's really in a state of transcendence all the time. And this is really another dakus, another refined difference between Talmudi Rabbi Kiva, the students of Rabbi Kiva, and Rabbi Shimon Yochai, Rabbi Shimon himself. The students of Rabbi Kiva, the death of the students of Rabbi Kiva is the absence of their life in this physical world. And because it's the absence of the life in the physical world, Rabbi Kiva tried to create through the Torah that he was living, through his support, through, through the life that he was, the way he taught, and the way he lived, Rabbi Kiva was trying to transform this world into a redemptive reality. That's what Rabbi Kiva wanted. He aspired for Mashiach. He said, Ben Karchum is Mashiach. Rabbi Kiva tried to transform this physical world and transform it into a holy place. And living through that period of time, right after the Churban, after the destruction of the second base of Mignash, the second temple, Rabbi Kiva taught and lived in a way that he was, he, he felt that we can create Gula, we can create redemption. We can create a place where there's no longer going to be the concealments of this world, the constrictions of the world, the choyshech of this world, the darkness of this world. And we're going to, we're going to physically change the, the, the fabric of this world and it's going to be in a better place. And unfortunately, the time was not right. The kates did not, did not come. It was not the end of time to be. And uh, Rabbi Kiva eventually was uh, also killed. He was killed in Messias Nafesh, Kiddush Hashem. And it was the end. So that, because Rabbi Kiva lived that way, the death of, of the students of Rabbi Kiva represents a state of mourning, it's an absence. What is Rabbi Shem Mechoy? The Oyer of Rabbi Shem Mechoy, the light of Rabbi Shem Mechoy, is a different type of light. The Oyer of Rabbi Shem Mechoy is the light of of the Geula within, within, within the Golas. There's two ways how to deal with Golas. One way to deal with Golas is with exile, constriction, limitations, the state that we're at. One is to say, we don't like it, we don't want it, and we're going to create a Geula reality. And obviously we can just create the vessels for it, but it has to, have, it has to be a cosmic event, and Hashem has to bring down Mashiach, and, it, and the world is changed. What's the oil of Reb Shimon? What's the light of Reb Shimon? The light of Reb Shimon is the light of Pnimi Torah, the light of the internal Torah. There's the external Torah, Kaviyachal, the external aspect of the Torah, which is sort of the body. And then there's the Pnimi Torah, the internal Torah, which is the soul. When, the, when there's a, a death, when Saul, God forbid, passes away, so death, actually, two things happen. The body passes away. The physical body dies, and therefore it's painful. But the neshama is actually released to a higher spiritual realm. The neshama doesn't have the confines of the body any longer, and it just reaps the benefit of all the actions that it did in this world. So from the perspective of the chitzoinias, from the perspective of the body, the external death is the end. But from the perspective of the soul, from the spiritual realm, there is no death. So that's why we have Two people died in this time period. One is Talmudia Rebbe Kiva, and we mourn for that, because they represent the body. They represent the Torah Shabbat Peh, the living body of Torah Shabbat Peh in, in, the, in, the, in the physical realm. And Rebbe Shimon Bayechai represents the teachings of the Zohar, the Pneumius Torah, the inner light of the Torah, which never dies. And in fact, that's why the death of Rebbe Shimon in the Zohar is called Hilula. His, on his own death, it's called Ilula. Ilula in Talmudic language, in the Gemara language, which is in the Guf language, in the body language, Ilula actually means a wedding. 
So in the language of Chazal and the Gemara, Hilula means marriage. In the language of the Zoyer, Hilula means death. How could death be marriage? Because it depends from which perspective. If your perspective is from the body, from a body paradigm, then death is the end. But if your perspective is from a spiritual realm, then on the, on the contrary, uh, uh, death is actually a release. Now, not that the tachlis is not to refine the body, but when de- death actually happens, the soul is released, becomes even larger. So this is the Hilula. This is why Rabbi Shimon, which represents the embodiment of Torah, Pneumius HaTorah, the internal Torah, is connected to a new type of light. It's a new light. What was the light that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai brought down to this world? Now, of course, there was a, there's a Messiah of, Torah, of, of, of the Pneumius HaTorah even before Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, just like Rabbi Kiva, becomes the, the embodiment of Kula Libri Rakiva, Rabbi Kiva becomes the embodiment of the, of the Gemara. The same thing with Rashbi becomes the embodiment of, of Pneumia Satoya. He's the Nitzus of Moshe that brings down the Pneumia Satoya, the internal Torah. Because he's the Nitzus of Moshe that brings down the internal Torah, his death is actually celebrated. That's the opposite of what you would think. That, the, that, that what appears to be on a physical level one way, sometimes on a spiritual level, is actually the opposite. And this is the depth of what really what the Marsha said before we quoted the Marsha that what's Lag Boimer that it's the supermajority of the days of the Oimer. What's the days of the Oimer? The days of the Oimer it's Soman Ashul Alikim. Soman Ashul Alikim means I desire to be closer to Hashem. Pesach is we receive godless, we receive greatness, leave it to Mitzrayim. And then all of a sudden we experience katnas, constriction, which we spoke about many times. That during this time period, all of a sudden you feel like you're missing something because Hashem wants you to create the kalim, the vessels. And that is through your own desire that you want to receive the godless. You yearn for the godless. You count one, two, you're counting the omer, you're counting down to get to the point that you're going to receive the Torah, Matan Torah, which is Shavuos. So in this time period between Pesach and Shavuos is a time where it's the, the, the metaphor, the mashal, is like a, like a woman and a man that separate from each other. And uh, there's an idea of bidikas, of, of checking themselves, which means that it's a time that they're separate. But the point of the separation, like Rabbi Shimon by Yechai, Rabbi Shimon actually teaches in the Gemara Nida, Rabbi Shimon says that's the laws of Nida, the laws of separation of spouses for this reason, to create stronger desire. That spouses separate for certain periods of time to create stronger desire that when they finally become unified, they have the, cra- the correct vessels. So what is the idea of sphere? Sphere on one hand is separation. And Rabbi Shimon says... He's Doyer's time in the Quran. He looks deeper into the verse. He looks deeper into the panemius of things. The Torah, the oil of the Torah, the light of the Torah of Rashbi says, don't take things superficially on a physical, just on the physical surface of things. Go a little bit deeper. What you see to be separation is actually the greatest time of longing. And if it's the greatest time of longing, in a way, it's actually the deepest level of connection. Let's say two people are connected to each other. Let's say a, a father and a son, or a mother and a daughter, or spouses, or child, children. Let's say people are very connected to each other. Where do you see the connection between these two people? You usually see the connection when, let's say, they're living together, and they're, they're, they're living together always. And you come into the house, you don't see that connection. Where do you see a really strong connection that these two people are really bound to each other? You usually see this at, the, at, a, at an airport, for example. Why do you see this in an airport? Because either someone just came or someone just came back. So when two people are living together and they're having a harmonious life, okay, even they love each other and they're very connected to each other, you don't see that strong chukka for each other. When do you see the chukka, when do you see the strong desire, either when they just came back from a trip, you haven't seen the person for a long time and people are ecstatic, or you have, the, the person's about to leave you. So this is what happens is when there's a reunification or there's about to be a separation, that's when actually the true unity is connected. And it can go even deeper. Where is the ultimate point of real unity is the moment when there's the deepest longing. When you long for kivinu, kave, that a person longs and hopes for something, is a kav, it's actually a line. That connects to the relationship. Sometimes the deepest connection is found in the place of the most absence. Because the person is most absent now, the person left and is not coming back for a long time. It's like the peak of the point of, of time. The person left for a month, and it's the 15th day. They didn't, they didn't leave just recently. They're not coming back for another while. 
At that peak moment, that's when the greatest longing for that person is. And because there's a greater longing, it actually reveals a greater connection. And this is the oil that was revealed by Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says that sometimes in the sphere of time, in the, in the, precisely in the moment of sphere, when we reach the peak of sphere, we reach the majority of time of sphere. So on one hand, you would say, wait a second, that's the, that's the peak of separation, that we, we, because now we really long for, for Hashem. We really long for connection. And Rabbi Shimon says, no, at that point of the, of, the, of the separation, of the deepest separation is where the greatest longing is because that's the greatest longing that's the greatest place of yichud the greatest cl- place of unity so Rabbi shimon sees that the oil that Rabbi shimon revealed into this world is this type of light that's able it's a, it's a, it's a, the the 33rd word in the torah is or what's the what's that what's that oil that we talk about what's that light that was created on the, the 33rd word of the torah the light that was created on the 33rd day is the oragon the hidden light What's that light? This light that happens on Wednesday, on, on the fourth day, which is the sun and the moon, which is a, a type of light that cancels the darkness. What is the light that was revealed on the first day of creation? The Ur, that first light. That's the Aragonas. What's the Aragon? Where do we find that Aragonas? You find the Aragonas by the story of Moshe Rabbeinu, with Moshe in the burning bush. It says, Vasnea in Ukol. He comes to the, he comes to the tree. And he sees that the tree is the tree still exists, and the fire is not consuming the tree. So the Zohar says, because there's two types of fire. There's fire in this world, that in order for it to exist, it has to eliminate something else. And then there's a higher fire that can simultaneously exist, and uh, simultaneously burn, and simultaneously let the thing exist. It's not a fire that cancels anything out. This is the Oyer Hagon. This is the hidden light of creation. What's the hidden light of Rabbi Shimon Yechai, the hidden light that Rabbi Shimon reveals? It's a light that's connected to a type of, of or that, re, that allows us to exist in exile. Means that there was a light that was revealed to the or of the, of the Rashbi, which allowed us to be sustained in exile. Because the oil of the oil the, of the inner parts of the Torah says that even though physically you can't do this mitzvah, you can't do this practice, you can't do this other thing, but on a pneumistic level, an internal level, you can still always do it. That's the oil that's revealed on, on the Lagba Oymer. It's the oil that allows us to exist even in the place where still darkness exists. It doesn't even have to dispel the darkness. It allows you to be connected to the oil even if it's a place of darkness. That's the mystery of, of, of Shimon. The mystery of Shimon, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, tradition, Chassidish Svarim brings down, the Meish Loyach, and Pesachim brings down, that Rabbi Shimon Yechoi was actually from the Shevet Shimon. That his name, his name is Shimon Yechoi. Shimon Yechoi. And Shimon comes because he was from the Shevet Shimon. What Shimon? Shimon is beside the Maltav in Afshi. Shimon has a special secret. Shimon is, is Bilak Masafik. Shimon comes to the word Sham Oven. There's sin. Shimon was able to relate to very, in the Torah, the, the Shimon, the person Shimon, one of the sons, the sons of Yaakov, was able to relate to situations that seemed a little murky, seems a little dark, with Zimri and with Dina. It was, seems a, harsh stories, and some of the Shvatim were, 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 would stand back. Some of the tribes, some of the sons of Yaakov would stand back. And Shimon was Dafka, the one that was able to go into those places and to find light, and to find redemption, and to find hope and possibility, even in a place where it seems like it's all oven, it's all sin, and it's all negative. And this is the oil of Rabbi Shem Bayechoi, to go into the place where you feel the most absence and the most choyshech, and to reveal that you think that the choyshech is a choyshech, you should know that because of that choyshech, you actually, you actually have the biggest oil now, you have the biggest light, because you long for it and you're connected to it. And this is Tzama Nafshel Lekim Lekel Choy. Masa Yav Vira Pnei Lekim. Tzama Nafshel Lekim Lekel Choy. Because of Magen Nazan's right. Tzama Nafshel Lekim Lekel Choy. To the living God, my heart yearns for you. Kel Choy refers to the 49 days of the Sphira. It's Kel Choy. My heart yearns, my soul yearns to have a connection with Hashem that's Kel Choy. That's a living God. I don't want it to be old. I don't want it to be stale. I don't want it to be dark. I want it to be alive. I want it to be fresh. I want it to be exciting. I want it to be passionate. I want my relationship with Akash Baruch Hu to be every single day I should wake up. At every single moment I should feel that it's a fresh relationship. Not that it's ever kvar. It was already. It happened already. I've done that. I davened already. I learned already. It already happened. No. Every single moment there should be daily schashas. 
That's the Tzom Nafshel Lakim. This is what I want. This is what I long for. This is why I have these kalim, my vessels. This is what I'm creating through the times of Sphira. I'm counting every day of the Omer. I'm counting, getting closer and closer because I want to have a relationship with Kel Choy. And I, I ask, Masai Avay Veira Pnei Lakim. When are you, am, am I going to be able to see the inner Pnei, the inner face of a Lakim? When you take the letters of Lakim, Aleph Lam and Hey Yud, the total, and you do the Pnei Lakim, which is the letters before them. You have the name, one of the names of Hashem, which is called Achtetam. We shouldn't pronounce it, but this is the way it's pronounced. This name is a name that's connected to Betochen, to trust. It actually has the same numeric value, 74, as the word Betochen. What is Betochen? What is trust? Trust means even though I don't see it, even though it's not clear, even though I can't see the light, even though I don't understand what I'm going through, I know that Hashem, you're here. I know that even though it's a sne, even though it's a thorn bush, but Hashem's light is resting on the thorn bush. The, the light doesn't dispel the, 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 the thorn bush. doesn't eliminate the thorn bush. doesn't say there is no thorn bush. doesn't say that it's not prickly. It is prickly, and yet Hashem's presence is there. That's the oil. This is what the oil that comes to be, is being revealed through the oil of the tires of the Rosh Bia, Rosh Bia, Rosh Bia. The oil of the tires of Rosh Bia is there is a thorn bush, and it is prickly, and it is hard, but Hashem's presence is there. Why? Because I have the talking, because I have trust. And even bitcho Hashem adiad, and even if I don't have trust, ade bitcho Hashem ade ad ad is also betachin because it's seventy four. So it means I have trust until I have trust. It means that even if I don't have trust now, I don't understand it, but I have trust that I could have trust. That's also even even a deeper level. But I really am asking for is masayavaveira penelikim. When is all this going to end? All the concealments. And that I need to have trust, and I need to try to find the light. And even though it's dark, I want to see the pnei lakim. I want the lakim, which is that level of concealment. I want to break open the, the lakim, and I want to see the pnei. What's the inner face of a lakim? The inner face of a lakim is chavdal chavdal The inner pnei, the face of lakim, is the numeric value of thirty-three, which is log. That's the gal. That's the revealing. The inner light of a lakim is actually Hashem's presence fully. Elakim, the, the word Elakim is Ilem Yutke, the silent name of Hashem, the silence of Ilem of the Yutke, the silence of Hashem. Because when we go very deep, we get to the Pnei Elakim, and it's finally revealed to us, and it's Gal, and it's a revelation to us on the Matan Torah, on the giving of the Torah of Primis Torah, which is on Lag Boimer, it's revealed to us that we finally, not only do we have to have trust, and not only do we not only do we just have just have trust, and we just hope, and we know that the light is there and it's present. But finally, the light Yifkub may lose some The light finally reveals itself fully, and the lakim falls away, and we have the revealing of the name of Hashem. For anyone who has questions on on any of the topics that the Rav spoke about, please comment them in the comment section, both on YouTube and Facebook. Um, one of the questions we received before the, before the class started was from a person named Justin or Yitzchak, and he asked, Yeah. Um, on Lag Bohmer, while sitting around a bonfire, what would be the appropriate meditation to bring her to, to, to think about? One of the things that we should think about when we, when we, have the, we sit around a bonfire is exactly what we talked about, about the fire. That the fire represents the oil represents the hidden light. It's the same fire that burned by the sna, by Moshe, the burning bush. And that's the fire that was revealed th- through Rashbi, through Primi Satara. And we're connected. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tangible visual to think about that light and to think about the light of Hashem's presence that exists in every type of exile that we are having. In, every, in any situation that we have in our lives, Sometimes it feels like elokim. Sometimes it feels like concealment, and we don't understand why we're going through this. But to re- the recognition that there's there's always a deeper, deeper light that's available in that time, and sometimes the deeper light that's available in that time is precisely in the place of that darkness. There's something in that darkness, in the sham of it, in that place of of negativity, that there's some type of lesson, some type of purpose, and some type of connection that we can reveal. And even if the connection could be just too long to be connected, that's also a big thing. Just because if we feel sometimes concealed, concealment in our life, and because of that we reach out to Hashem, and we say, I, I, want to, I want to be connected to you, I don't feel your presence, that in itself is presence. That allows you to be connected. So to understand that we, in every situation that we have, 
to try to find that light, try to find that connection. Um, we have another question, and they want to know why is it that if the students of Rabbi Akiva died because they represented the physical, do we fast and afflict the physical? Whereas Rabbi Rashbi, who represented the spiritual, do we then do physical actions such as dancing and, and uh, cutting no, our hair? Right. So, you, you, since Rabbi Akiva represented the physical, the Talmud Rabbi Akiva represented the physical, so their absence created a void. On a physical level, we feel pain. So the way we show our physical pain, that we're in Avelis, is some type of form of mourning, is that we also physically stop doing things that bring us joy. Because there was a physical absence in this world. It's like it's a correlation to that type of quality that left. Rajbi passing away was actually a release of, of, of huge spiritual energy in this world. Because, like it says, it's that a stalag, that a tzadik, the stalag, that a, a tzadik that passes away, a stalag, that a, a tzadik that passes away is found more present in this world, even more, is found in this world even more present than he was during his lifetime or her lifetime. Which means because once the tzadik is, is, leaves this world, the fullness of the tzadik's life beyond their body is fully present. So there's actually a time to celebrate and to feast. And to do things that also symbolically connect it to the Oyer of Shem Marichoy, if it's if it's to learn the Zayar or to even uh, bonfires or things like that, these are all things that are connected to Rabbi Shimon. Is there any other uh, thing that we're supposed to do? We have a question. Is there any other thing that we're supposed to do besides for obviously light a fire? Some people also there's a custom to play with um, bow and arrows. There's a there's an Indian to play with bow and arrows. And many tzaddikim actually try to shoot a bow and arrow. On, on, uh, a lot of kids do this, um, but it has to do with the bow and arrow. Besides the fact that the keshes, the bow and arrow, uh, a bow represents uh, also a rainbow, which says about in times of Rishbi, times of Rishima, there was no rainbow in that, in that generation because Rishima was so righteous that he protected the generation from the possibility of even being a flood which the rainbow came is symbolic of the Hashem says I won't create the flood no longer but also the, the idea of the rainbow uh, the, di- the idea of actually a, a bow and arrow is that the further you pull back the higher you fl- higher, fl- higher the higher flies which is exactly what we're saying the depth of something that seems one direction actually reaches the other direction even further the depth of, of separation in t- times of sphere brings the greatest longing which brings the, dr- the greatest connection so it's, it's connected to that idea it's time to think about Primus, something more internal, something more deeper. We have a question from a very uh, holy Yid named Acher, calls himself Acher, and he says that it seems to have been proven in certain, conclusively in certain books, that uh, Lagbomer is not the year site of Rashbi. Uh, how. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. That's not. That's, that's, not, no, that's, not, that's an incorrect statement. What it says is that there's. The first place that we find that Lag Bo'emer was is mentioned as a day of Shemes Rabbi, of Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon Merchai, the Rashbi, is in Kisveri Zal. So Shara Kavanas, it's mentioned in Kisveri. In Kisveri, the Chidah says that that there's another version that they found that it doesn't say Yom Shemes Rashbi, but Yom Simchas Rashbi. Because that's actually brought down that Arizal said that you're not allowed to say Nachem on the day of Simchas Rashbi. So it was the day of the joy of Rashbi. However, whether it says in Kisve Arizal, let's, let's try to understand this a little deeper. Just because something says 200 years before something else doesn't make it more real. In other words, the Gemara doesn't say, the Gemara, the Gemara which is recording the events that happened at that time, or the Zohar, does not say that Rashim Mochai passed away on that day. If this is the correct version of of the Shara Kavanas, if this is the correct version of the teachings of the Arizal, then it does say that Rashim passed away, uh, that he did pass away. If this is a Talas Atfus, if this is a mistake in the print, which is possible according to the Chida, when it says Yom Simchas Rashbi. However, the Arizal lived 500 years ago, but there were great Sadiqim, like I said, like the, the Balatanya and the Bnei Yisachar and the Yonis and Ayipshitz and etc., 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 all the great Sadiqim in the last few hundred years that said, just like they said that it's the day that, is, that Shimon was born, which doesn't say anywhere, and it says it's the day that he left the cave, which also doesn't say anywhere, which means that there was a spiritual Messiah through Bali Ruach HaKodesh, 
to people that were, had the high spiritual sensitivity, that they understood that this is the day that's connected to Rosh Hashanah. So if the Arizal said it, or the Balatanya said it, and the Yonis and Ipshit said it, and the Bnei Sasko said it, I don't think it makes such a big difference. One of them said it, for sure. For the last question, um, our friends want to know if the rabbi can give us a blessing for Lag Baomer. You should have a huge blessing. Lag Baomer should be a day that you should talk and be... Lag Baomer is also a day that says that it's a, a person that has, uh, can receive brachas for children. Um, has to do with a certain posse, but has to do with gal, that revelation, which means children can mean the physical children. Then the people that need to have children in this world, that are trying to have children in this world physically, should, God willing, shall have beautiful children this year. It says that, uh, it says the Gemara Makis, it says that people before they had children, they used to pray that they have a child like Rabbi Shimon. So there's actually in the Indian to Davin to have a child like that will light up the world, like the other Rabbi Shimon. So everyone that needs a child should have should be zeichah to have children this year, and everyone that needs some type of birth in their life. There's a lot of types of birth people need. People need to be birthed in the shidduch and they birth in parnasa, and all types of revelations of birth. They should all have beautiful and healthy and easy transitions of birth. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining the stream. Um, if anyone did not get a chance to ask their question, you could you could feel your questions. Um, you can send your questions, post them afterwards, and hopefully we'll get to them. If not, then stay tuned. Next week, Wednesday, we'll be streaming a live class uh, of Rapinson, again, live on Facebook and YouTube.